Praise God. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Oh, it's so good to be together in the house. It's so good to love you. Lord, I thank you that life covered where the Spirit is, because the Spirit brings life. And so as we go into the word this morning, Lord, we continue this series. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come and teach us. Holy Spirit, I ask, I ask, Lord, that we would not hinder you. Yes, Lord. Help me, Father, as your servant. Yes, Lord. Lord, before your church, before your bride, I bow my knee. Jesus. And Father, I ask. Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Please come and change our lives. Yes, my God. To bring us closer in you that your presence Jesus. would not only fill our house, but would radiate from us. To touch a lost yes, my and a dying world. Thank you, Lord, today yes. that we change yes, Lord. because of you. Yes, Lord. And we want to give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We, we're continuing in our series, Redeemed. Mm. We, we've dealt with in, in weeks past, we started with redeeming the time. Amen. And all of these are on our uh, Facebook channel, or on our Facebook page, or on our YouTube channel. So if you missed any of the previous sessions, please go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We need you to subscribe because we need to get the numbers up so Facebook don't try and close us down. Amen? Because that's what they're trying to do right now. They're trying to close the church down. Mm. And we're not letting nobody close us down. Yes. Yeah. Amen? So please join that, subscribe to that watch those videos so we started with redeeming the time mm. we then spoke about redeeming what our inheritance. our inheritance thank you for listening hallelujah we spoke about redeeming our inheritance and then last week you had bless you thank you Jan, for the word you had ministered about redeeming the opportunities that god gives us and today i want to touch the hardest one of the four and i left the best till last <laughs> redeeming our tongue redeeming our tongue I want you if you've got your Bibles I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 6 and I want to show you something that Paul understood when he spoke about the armor and before we read the scriptures in, in Ephesians chapter 6 can anybody just shout out to me what is the armor give me some of the armor just shout out some of the armor. Belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness. Faith, amen. Amen. Now why do we need all of those things? Well, let's read it. Verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to do what? Stand against the wiles of the devil. If you don't have on the armor of God, you've got problems standing against the devil. He's going to come against you and push you back a little bit instead of us, the church of God, rising up to push him back. Yes. Amen? So he says, for we wrestle not, and this is what we need to understand in verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm. but we are against the principalities and powers and against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Isn't it interesting that I hear a lot of people talking about the devil in low places? The dark dungy caves in the low... No, it says we wrestle against spiritual principalities and weakness in high places. We've got to start understanding scripture. Amen? Wherefore, take you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand. Verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having your blessed plate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yeah. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. If you leave your, your shield behind in the morning, the fiery darts get extinguished in you instead of in the shield. Yes. It's dumb not to carry a shield. Somebody say amen. 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 And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now, sadly for me, verse 18, most Christians leave out. They put on the armor, the physical armor, but part of the armor is praying always. Yes. 
part of the armor. A gun without bullets is an ornament. <laughs> might look good. You might look mean and you know rough and tough and come from the bluff, but when the shooting starts, it ain't no good if it got no bullets. Come on, somebody. Amen. Now I want you to look what he says in verse 19. This is the apostle Paul speaking about the armor and about what he needs to fight the enemy, push back the gates of hell. And he goes in and he says this, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mysteries of the gospel. Come on. Paul's confession here was that he opened his mouth boldly and makes known the mysteries of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in bounds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Yeah. Now I want to say today, based on that, premise of scripture that God wants the church to speak as we ought to speak yeah. and so that if God put it in such a, a, a phrase that he wanted us to speak as we ought to speak then it tells me that there's a time that we speak that we ought not yeah. because if we should speak the way we speak then there's an opportunity to speak the way we shouldn't speak Come on. so Paul had an understanding that I may open my mouth boldly and speak that which is the mysteries of the gospel as I ought to speak. Yes. So as we redeem our tongue, we know, and just, to, just some spiritual foundation, how did God make the earth? He spoke. Yes. <laughs> he spoke, let there be, and there was. Mm. His words created. Our words are part of that same spirit of creation whereby we declare and we decree. Amen? And if we don't redeem our mouth, it'll declare the wrong thing and decree something other than the kingdom of God, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to get ourselves into a place where we redeem our vocabulary. Mm. How many of you were sailors at one time of your life? Mm. Well, you swore like one anyway. Mm. <laughs> And then we got saved. And if you were a natural sailor and you got saved, you're still a sailor. But what changed? One of the things that should change in a Christian's life is our vocabulary, the way we speak, the way we communicate. Amen? We don't add Christ into our life and carry on swearing like a trooper. Now, some of you sitting here looking at me like, you know, Pa, we'll never do that. We were never that bad. Praise God. But every time a word comes out of our mouth that does not align to the gospel of the kingdom, you might as well be swearing. That's as straight as I can get. Amen, Frank's back in the house. And you know Frank. You see, we, we shouldn't speak like the world speaks because we've been bought, the Bible says, with a price. Come on. The price of the blood of Jesus, the price of the body of Christ on Calvary's cross. So we're no longer ours, the Bible says in Romans. We've been bought with a price. We no longer speak like the world. Amen. But you know, there's another step in the redemption of our vocabulary. We don't speak like the religious Pharisees either. Come on. We also shouldn't be speaking like the Old Testament children of God. Mm. Because you see, the Old Testament children of God were looking for a Messiah. They were waiting for a Messiah. They lived under the law. We are no longer living under the law. We are living under the Spirit of God, the grace of God. We are not an Old Testament believer. Now I want to say this, I don't mean to be offensive to anybody, but there's too many Christians that want to go back and live in the Old Testament. And, and, and you see, I, I, can, I can go on for hours about what we do as a church, as the Christians, that we practice Old Covenant. Yes. Now, yes. please hear what I'm trying to say carefully. I don't mean to be uh, contradictory and I don't mean to be offensive to anybody. I'm married to the most awesome woman in the world. Mm. Now your wife and your aunt might be awesome, but this one's the most awesome Amen. for me. <laughs> but can you imagine? Mm. I am married to this awesome. 
But every time I'm with her, I talk about my ex-wife. Come on. What's going to happen? Mm. Going to be some trouble. Yeah. Mm. Well, there's not going to be some peace at least. Mm. Because I'm talking about my past. Mm. Now, even though I have a past, because I was previously married, even though I have a past, I'm not living in my past. Amen. I'm living in my now. Amen. Which is new covenant. Yes. I, that old covenant was broken. That old covenant, there was, a, there was a breach of contract in the old covenant and the old covenant of marriage was set aside. Not only in the court, but it was set aside in the spirit. Mm. Yeah. And now I came into a new covenant. Made, thank God, with better promises. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Because, you know, Vom and I have never had a, 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 a harsh word with each other. We've never disagreed with each other. We've never raised our voice at each other. That's a better covenant than I had. Can you say amen, somebody? Amen. But can you imagine if I want to keep living in the old? Because I'm so used to fighting. I'm so used to squabbling. I'm so used to raising my voice that I try and bring that into the new covenant. What's going to happen? I'm going to pollute the new with the old. We've been talking about putting new wine into new wine skins. So when you want to Worship like the Israelites. Mm. You're worshiping in the old covenant. Mm. Hello? Yes. Yes. Now listen, I thank God for those folk and we love Israel. Mm. But I don't love them above the new covenant of God. Yes. See, they are kin, your family. Mm. There's a big difference. Yeah. They're my kin, like my natural family. They are kin, but you are family. Because yeah. we're born again of the same spirit yeah. so we need to understand that we could we've got to stop talking like the old pharisees mm. the sadducees our value system and our vocabulary need to align yeah. Wow. Yeah. our value system must align with our vocabulary mm. amen? amen romans 12 says it like this i beseech you brethren by the mercies of God that you present your body and your, I'm adding in, and your speech a living sacrifice. Mm. Holy and acceptable unto God. That is your reasonable service. Mm. It's not exceptional. It's reasonable to speak like Jesus speaks. To act like Jesus. As you see, let me say this. The Bible says, you see, often we quote scripture, but we don't ex uh, amplify it to its logical cause. If I am in Christ, the Bible says, I am a new creature, I am hid in Christ. Mm. Yeah. Then I'm going to walk like Him. Cool. I'm going to talk like Him. Okay. I'm going to act like Him. Why? Because I'm in Him. Yeah. Come on. But if I'm walking, trying to be in Him, and I'm bringing flesh with me, I can't walk in God in flesh. Because flesh cannot stand in the presence of God. Or the other way around, God cannot stand in the presence of flesh. So God wants us to clean up our vocabulary this morning and redeem our words. Amen? Now, I, I want to tell you, the devil attacks the mind. When you get born again, your spirit is sealed, the Bible says. When we go into the waters of baptism, and I'm not going to unpack all these, you know these foundations. When you go into the waters of baptism, and you confess Jesus not only to be Savior, but be your Lord and be Christ. You are sealed, the Bible says. Your spirit, man, is sealed. But you know what? Your mind still needs to be renewed. And what? how does the, the Bible... See, when we talk about mind and we talk about heart, heart is an organ that pumps blood. My spirit is not my heart. We often use uh, physiological terms to describe the spirit, but he is not my heart. Because my heart wants to attack me. It's not my spirit. My spirit will never attack me. So my heart and my spirit are two separate things. But you see, what we need to understand is the enemy will come to attack your mind, to place thoughts and doubts and unbeliefs in your mind. And out of the abundance of what's in your spirit, man, the mouth speaks. Yep. The mouth does not speak what's in the abundance of your mind. Your mouth speaks what's in the abundance of your spirit. Yeah. And so when you speak the words other than that which God has called you, commanded you to speak, there's some corruption in your spirit, man. And I'm going to tell you why it's like that. Is because your mind, man, 
has been contaminated with evil thoughts and thoughts that are not aligned to the word of God and they've infiltrated, they've leached out of your mind man and they've got into your spirit man and they've c c contaminated your spirit man and now out of the abundance of your spirit man the mouth is speaking. Oh we love you Jesus. Oh we bless you. I'll never blaspheme you Lord. And then you hit your thumb up with a hammer what comes out? There's something in the spirit that's still got to be dealt with. Now, thank God we're all on a journey. Nobody's perfect. None of us here are perfect. But you see, the minute I'm conscious that I've got to change my vocabulary. And one of the things that uh, in the fivefold ministry and apostolically that I'm doing, I am bringing to the, 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 the mind of ministers their wrongful vocabulary. Because you see, we started to speak with these pretty little cliches. Mm, mm. Jesus is not a cliche. Yeah. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. But you see, we started to speak stupid. Mm. We started to speak stupid. Let me give you an answer. Or, or an example, excuse me. Mm. Pastor Raymond says, my church. Mm -mm. That speaks stupid. Come on. Because not his church. Amen. It's his church. Amen. 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 Oh, but pastor, you're, you're splitting hairs. No, I'm not. I'm splitting spirit. Mm. I mean, let me tell you, I love my brother Raymond. Mm. But if my brother Raymond starts to say to this beautiful woman, my wife, mm. we're going to box. Definitely. And he's going to lose. <laughs> Even though I love him. Mm. Even though we are brothers in Christ, we fellowship together, we love But the minute he wants to take what's not his, mm. which is mine, I'm going to show you the jealousy of God. <laughs> now, now, now you see, you've got to understand something. Every time, every Sunday morning, mm. pastors get up. My church, my church, my church, my Come church. On. Two things happen. Number one, out of their mouth comes a word that is not godly. And the Spirit of God is grieved. And the Spirit of God withdraws. Yeah. That's right. And we wonder why there's no anointing in the house. Because mm. we grieve the Holy Ghost by our words. Let's tame the tongue. You know the passage in James. Let's just pick through some verses in the book of James chapter 3. It talks about brothers. Be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive a great co condemnation. Mm. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. So let's understand there's no perfect man. Because we've all offended. Come on. But once we know the truth, we should be less offensive. I had somebody just this week call me a racist bigot. I'm a word. I'm a racist bigot. Oh really? Now you see, I'm not going to get upset. And if you look on my watch and my blood pressure on my watch, it didn't even move a beat. Why? Because I know that not true. See, he just got himself backed into a corner where he couldn't defend the word of truth. He tried to defend the word according to his culture group. And so he tried to try to come against us because we're pre preaching the truth. Mm. So the only way he could do that was to hurl insults. Mm. How small-minded and petty is that? Mm. Amen? So he offended with his word. Mm. He, he was able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. And we turn about the whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they are so great and they're driven by fierce winds, they are turned about with a very small helm, wherever so the governor listeth. The rudder turns the ship. Mm. Our tongue turns us. Which way are you going this morning? Even so, verse 5, even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a manner a little fire kindleth, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so that the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Mm. Now James was pretty straight. Yeah. Yes. James was in the house. Your tongue can set on fire from hell. So I believe it's, it, it's important that we learn how to get our tongue, which is our speech, not just this physical organ, 
or speak in line with God. So we speak and pronounce the word of God and we don't pronounce this iniquity that comes out of our tongue. See, look what he says in verse 9. Wherein we bless God, even the Father, and we curse men, which are made after the similitude or in the likeness and image of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brother, these things ought not to be so. Come on. That's what James is saying, so is what Paul said. The things that I ought to speak, I want to speak. I don't want to speak the wrong things. And yet I want to say as we look back in our lives, we've grown up speaking the wrong things. We speak our confession. Now you see, I'm not saying when you're hurting, don't say I'm fine. That's a lie. See, liars will not inherit the promises of God. Amen? Because your tongue is now a liar. And I've got a whole lot of scriptures for you. If you want to talk about lying, there's a whole lot of scriptures that say don't do that. Amen? Just don't do that. So this, the, see, some of the Gospels, they got into this name it, claim it, and frame it. And they started lying. Power of God, the Prince of, Prince of Peace, can't be in a lie. So when you ask me how am I doing, and I'm not doing well, I'm going to tell you, I'm not in the natural, I'm not doing well, but thanks be to God. You see, I've told you the fact, and I've told you the truth. And I'm not going to live in the fact, I'm going to stay in the truth. See, the dog bit me, and I've got a gaping hole in my leg, and the blood's running down my leg. I don't say the dog didn't bite me. I say, the dog bit me. However, praise be to God, by His stripes, I am healed. Amen. You see, it's okay to say what the facts are, but always overlay the facts with the truth. The Come truth on. is the Word of God. But you see, we, we in, our, in, our, in our zeal and our, our quest to be positive, we start to lie. Don't lie. God can't bless lies. God bless honesty and truth. Amen. The tongue is this fire. Now, here's an interesting thing. What do you think the tongue was first made for? In Adam and Eve, what was the tongue first made for? To give praise to the Lord. Every morning, every evening, every night, they walked in the garden giving praise to our God. Don't we sing a lot of songs about give praise to our God? So with the same mouth, we give praise. But then sometimes, because what could be in us, we don't give praise. Now I know my brother Raymond, because I know he's a man of God, man of integrity. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you as an example. Brother Raymond, if I told you to hit your wife, would you hit your wife? No. Nope. Even if I told you to? Hit your wife? No. Why? He didn't even have to consider it. He didn't have to say, oh, well, he told me to, maybe I can get away with a quick slap. <laughs> no, why? Because in his character, in his nature, that isn't in there anywhere. Come on. So the devil doesn't have an opportunity. Come on. Because the devil has no power of creation. The power of creation is in God. Amen. But the power of manipulation is in the devil. So if it's in there, he'll find it and manipulate for you to use it. But if it's not in there, it ain't coming out of there. So I can beg him, I can plead with him to hit his wife. It won't even be considered in his heart because it's nowhere in there. Amen. So when you get angry, when you run your mouth off, don't say the devil made me do it. No. It was in there somewhere. Now you might have buried it under the feet. But it's in there somewhere. And it came out of there at the right opportunity of the enemy. But if it's not there. If it's not there. It ain't ever going to come out of there. Can you say amen somebody? If I take, if I empty this bottle out of the water. And there's no water in it. Can you get a drink from the bottle? No. Why? Because there's nothing in there to drink. What did Jesus say like this? The devil came to tempt Jesus. And Jesus said, there's nothing of you in me. Clap me. Hallelujah. I'm being Cape Town now. There is nothing of you in me. Now our tongue 
is a representation of what's in us. That's good. I don't care if you've got a title. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. I don't care if you've got this beautiful uh, uh, maroon suit. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you can sing like an angel. Mm -hmm. Your tongue will be a representation of what's in us. Sure. Come on. It was first made, the, the tongue was made as an organ of praise. Mm. But in many people it's become an organ of unrighteousness. Sure. The tongue, even though it be a little member, mm. destroys the whole world. Mm. You're good to somebody. Mm. You love somebody. But your words don't line up with your actions. All your good works are nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah, true. All your good works are nothing. What is in the tongue. And vice versa, you can say all the flattery you want, but if you don't back it up with actions, those words are frivolous. Yeah. That's good. The evil tongue. The angry tongue. Let's talk about an evil tongue for a moment. Now, listen, some of these people live with. Some of these people think it's okay. It's not okay. Mm. And you see, folks, I love you enough to get you to change. Amen? Amen. Why? Because the minute we walk outside of the will of God, we rob ourselves of the blessing. God doesn't withhold the blessing. Yeah. I've heard so many preachers preach twat <laughs> that God withholds the blessing. No. My Bible says He will withhold no good thing from you. But if I take this bottle and I go to a stream of beautiful, fresh, clean, running water, cold, beautiful, crystal mountain stream, and I put this bottle under, it, it'll get filled up. But if I go and do something stupid, like put a cork in the front of it, then the stream's still flowing, but the bottle's empty. God does not withhold His blessing from any of us. His blessings are new every morning, praise God. He is my refuge, my strength, my very help in a time of need. He does not withhold from us. We block God's blessing by what we say. Amen. By what we do. But today we're concentrating on what we say. An evil tongue is an angry tongue. It curses. It speaks out wrongly. It condemns mm. with passion. You listen to somebody that's angry. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, vindictive. Mm. Vulgar. It's condemnation with a passion. When the passion was supposed to be love, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Come on. So it's a counterfeit. Mm. A wrongful spirit, which is wrathful, full of wrath. Mm has no place in the gospel. Mm. Now, you've got to hear what I'm saying and I love you. Mm. Christ loves the sinner. And Christ died for our sin. Mm. And for you and I to wash us and cleanse us. But once we get saved, we have an obligation and a responsibility to change who we are. Mm. Line number two. People say, well, I was born this way. And I'll stay this way till I die. Well, that's probably true. But that's not what God intended. He said, I'll bring you out of your sin. Bring you out of your past. I'll wash you, cleanse you, and I'll change you. The way I was born is not the way I'm going to die. Why? Why? Because somewhere down the line, when I was 16 years old, God stopped that rot and He turned my life around. And I got born again. Hallelujah. Now, from that day, I was a baby again in the Spirit. Yeah. Mm. I had to learn to walk again. And like a baby, it first learns to, to, to make little sounds. Mm. Any of you got little grandchildren? Mm. They start making those little sounds. Mm. Come on. And they're so cute. Mm -hmm. And even though you can't understand a word they're saying, you think you do. But you're so excited, they're making a noise. But as that child grows up, they change their vocabulary. Come on. Okay. From Gaga mm. to Dada. Mm -hmm. And they always say Dada first. Mm -hmm. They always say Daddy first. Why? Because the spirit in them is yearning for their father in heaven. Come on, somebody deny me. You can't. Because they always say Dada first. Because the spirit in them that came from God is yearning to reconcile back to God. That's the first thing that comes out of their spirit. Daddy. And guess what some mummies do? 
No, don't do that, say mommy. Mommy. No, I'm joking. Because it's not a competition, see? When you have children, youngsters, I'm telling you, the first word coming out of their mouth is daddy. In a slightly different vernacular, slightly different string of verbs and say, but it's going to be daddy. Not because daddy's better in the house than mommy. It's because they are yearning for a connection to their spiritual father. Amen? Time. They learn to speak daddy. But they change over time. Their vocabulary changes to become more coherent. And when we get born again, we might have been like we were in the world. That if you got saved on a Friday night, Saturday morning, you're a brand new creature. But you still got some old habits. But over time, when you submit to the Word, when you're in the family, and you get around the people of God, you start to change. Because you don't want to act like that anymore. Come on. See, that's the problem I have with people that turn fellowship and are not submitted into a local house. You're not going to change to the degree you should change because you're not with the family. Mm. Hey, you're a Christian. You can be all on your own and be a Christian, but you're not going to grow to the same degree if you're not in family. If you miss meals, you don't grow well. Mm -hmm. Come on, you get hungry. And let me ask you a question. We've all done it as children. Mommy's busy cooking a beautiful meal at home. But at four o'clock, you've been playing sport in the afternoon, you're hungry. And because you're not at home, what do we do? Even as adults, there's some that still do it. You stop at the garage because you're hungry and you buy a pie. <laughs> and a coke <laughs> wrong food because you're not at home where there's good food Come on. and when you're not in the house at home you're going to eat wrong food because yeah. you're hungry so those that aren't coming to church those that don't go in a, a place of fellowship you're going to eat the wrong food mm -hmm. because you're hungry mm -hmm. but come where there's good food amen, amen. I don't know why we got on that a vain tongue, the Bible says. A vain tongue shows a light heart. But a good man's words are weighty and prudent. Mm -hmm. In other words, a good man's heart has got wisdom in his words. But those that are shallow are frivolous and foolish. That's what the Bible says. Read it in Proverbs. We haven't got time to go to all the scriptures. I'll post these on the group. You can read them in Proverbs 10. The mouth of fools... Oh, I love this in verse 15, Proverbs 15. But the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. Mm -hmm. What comes out of your mouth? Foolishness. they got a doctrine. Oh, by the way, on, 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 on the conference on Monday, I was made an honorary professor. I was made a professor. Not that type of professor. I profess Christ. Come on, because I profess Christ, I'm a professor. Yes. And then, I don't need the title. I profess Christ, so I'm a professor. What do you profess? Mm -hmm. Amen. How many of us miss or waste the godly opportunities yeah. given to us by God yes. because of frivolous discourse? Frivolous words. Let me ask you a question, ladies. Let me pick on you this morning. Others down. Does God say you're the beautiful daughter of the Most High King? Does He say you're beautiful? Does He say you're more precious than rubies? No. And then you go look in the mirror and say, I'm ugly. You just missed an opportunity with God because of what came out of you. And that's, that's just one example. You see, because of that frivolous discourse or that frivolous communication, that negative confession, that speech that is wrongly aligned to the world system instead of God, our decree and our declaration changes and we miss God's word. Every idle word that we speak is going to be judged until we repent of it and put it under the blood. I don't know about you, I speak a lot. So, you know, I don't know about you this morning, my step count is 8,000 already. I don't know what my word count is, probably a little more. So in, the, so in the server room of heaven, they're racking up my words. Because one day I'm going to give an account for every single idle word. 
So if you had a clicker, you know those things you, you keep recording of, of whatever clicking? People are chuck, taking boxes out of the storeroom and you're clicking each one that goes past? Mm. It's called a clicker. Imagine if your clicker counts your words. Sure. How many words have you spoken today that were idle words? How many words have we spoken today that were evil words? How many words have we spoken today that were unkind words? Mm. Broke down instead of building up. Mm. He that is of the earth, in other words, carnal, speaks carnally. But he that is of the spirit speaketh of the spirit. Amen. Now I'm not saying walk around be holy like, you know, oh, I won't even talk about, do you want a glass of water? Oh, blah, 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 blah. And you go, no, that's not what I'm saying, church. Mm. So you don't take it into a ditch on the other side. Mm. A scripture that very few people understand. Mm. The Bible says, let not foolish jesting be once mentioned amongst you. Wow. But how many of us foolishly jest? See, in church this morning, you raise your hands and you sang glory. Hallelujah. Mm. On Monday or next Friday, mm. by the way, we have squadron meeting next Friday, so not next Friday, but another Friday, get out with the boys off to work. Are you still in the speech pattern of glory, hallelujah? Or are you swearing and cursing like they are and telling jokes like they are? Mm. You see, I believe this church, we are known by our words as well as our actions. Your CV may attract people to you, mm. but your words will confirm who you are. John the Baptist, Look at his words. Go to, you know, read the words of Jesus in your Bible that are in red. But also read all the words of John the Baptist. Here comes the one whose sandals are not even worthy to it. wasn't, well, he's coming to steal my patch. I've been on this patch preaching as an evangelist for many years. And here comes Jesus to take over. No. Look at his words because it was what was in his heart. Which started when he was in the womb. He led when he recognized the spirit of Jesus. Yes. It comes out of our mouth when we recognize the spirit of Jesus. Okay. Come on somebody. The Bible says in James 4, speak no evil one of another. Mm. Speak no evil one of another. Unclean tongue. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of our mouths. So, what should then come out of our mouths? the word of God words of kindness and affirmation words of love, joy and peace let me tell you what I love doing now in the United Kingdom I did it even more effectively because they, they have a culture that doesn't greet people they just walk staring in front of them if you stop at a, at a, at a door of a, of a shop and you open the door for somebody else to walk through, which is my manners, that's how I was taught, mm. they don't even say thank you. Mm. And after a couple of days, in the first time I visited that country uh, as an adult, I started saying, good morning, hello, God bless you. you. Just watch the reaction. Because it's foreign to this. It's foreign. In our community, as we take Christ into our community, it's foreign for our community for you and I to show them love yeah. and speak love exactly. speak goodness and kindness and mercy Amen. over them mm. see I want to be judged if I'm going to be judged by God mm -hmm. I want my words to be judged that were words of goodness and kindness Amen. so to do that I've got to change my mindset and I've got to change my vocabulary because if I don't change my mindset I'll never change my vocabulary See, in this country, racial divide. People were taught of certain ethnic groups that were taught to hate others. Mm. Yes. They were taught to hate. Mm. And so now we come in church and I say, well, love all men. Mm. But you were taught to hate. Mm. So there's got to be a process of transforming that mind that is full of hatred. And it's not your fault. Mm -hmm. Because you were taught like that. Now you've got to retrain that mind. Mm. I mean, let me ask you a question. How, what side of the road do you drive on in South Africa? Just checking. On the left. On the left. 
So if you go to America, what's going to happen? You're going to be conscious all the time that I'm going to drive on the other side. Now, I was always okay driving in the United States as long as I didn't have to make right-hand turns at intersections. The rest was okay. But the right hand turn just got me when I wasn't concentrating, Ray, you've been there, and you just turned into the wrong side of the traffic. Whoops, what's wrong with all these guys coming at me? And the 18 wheelers hoots in and he's screaming at me. I'm like, <laughs> but when I'm conscious, get to the light. It's like when you're doing your drivers, you know, you've got to pull away on that hill stop. You're so conscious of the brake and the accelerator. When I drive in the States like that, and, you, and if you don't do it often, you only visit it once every two or three years, guess what? You have to be even more conscious of what you do. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the same with you and I in the, in the kingdom of God. The minute we want to change your speech, we have to become conscious of what we say. Mm. So that we're conscious not to say the wrong thing. In other words, stop driving your speech on the wrong side of the tracks. Ah. Right? Because you're going to have an accident. Oh, you're going to get a ticket, brother. Hallelujah. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm. I want to tell you, out of the heart prevails evil thoughts, murder. Mm. The desire to defile a man comes out of the heart. But when you change your mind, mm. your speech changes. How do I know who's renewed in their mind? By what comes out of their mouth. Mm. How are you doing? I'm blessed. Having a tough week, but I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. How do I know you're blessed? Because it's coming out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Are you learning something this morning? Yes. Mm -hmm. You see, the world, when we walk like a duck, <laughs> crack like a duck, the world says you're a duck. <laughs> yeah. That's a saying, isn't it? Uh -huh. If it walks like a duck, cracks like a duck, it's a duck. So when we walk like the world, mm -hmm. and we talk like the world, they think we are of the world. Now you want to stand up and preach the gospel. They don't give you the attention because why? You're just like us. Now you're a hypocrite. And who are you to judge us? But when you walk in the spirit and you've never walked with them in the flesh, they will. They might not like what you say and what you stand for, but they'll respect you for who you are. Because you don't compromise. Church, I want to say this to you with all love and respect. Salvation is not enough. Mm. Getting saved is the beginning, not the end. Come on. Thank God you're saved. Thank God you started. You're a baby now. Whether you're 30, 40, 20, or 10, the day you got born again, you became a baby in Christ who needed milk. And you need to suck on the milk so that you could grow to get the meat. Mm -hmm. But if you only stay on salvation, you're going to stay a baby and stay on milk. Mm. God needs us to stand up. We need to be of the, of the same spirit that speaks Christ. Can we speak Christ? What did Paul say? Let's read it again, Ephesians 6. As for me, the utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mysteries of the gospel. What comes out of our mouth? The mysteries of the gospel? The cares of our life? See, when I look at Christians, when we are caught up because we've not been taught. Mm. We're, taught we, we're caught up in a selfish gospel. It's all about me. Lord, my needs me. Lord, my blessings. Mm. Yes. That's going to come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Paul said, I want to preach the mysteries that come out of my mouth. Boldness mm. that the mysteries of the gospel can come out of my mouth. Mm. Not about my needs. Now, God will meet our needs. But let me tell you when God meets our needs. Somebody give me a scripture when God meets our Yeah, but give me the scripture. When does He do that? That's what He does. When does He do it? Mm. But when? When? Matthew 6, 33. When does He meet all your needs? Seek first the kingdom of God and then all these things shall be added unto you. When do we get it? When we seek the kingdom. When our confession is kingdom, all things are given to us. When our confession is just gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give my name's Jimmy. We haven't sought the kingdom. 
we haven't met the condition. Now we have to strain. Now we start pleading with God. Now we start manipulating. Now we get into programs. Listen, I don't have to do anything for Velma to love me. I don't. I can just be blessed. Why? Because she's going to love me because I sought first the kingdom. Amen? Amen. In our marriage state, I sought the kingdom of our marriage. Once I had the kingdom of our marriage sorted out, the blessings of the marriage just come upon me and overtake me and flood me, praise God. <laughs> but if I don't love her in the kingdom sense of marriage, it's going to be a struggle to get any blessing. Yeah. Seek first the kingdom. Come on. See, we preach that. It sounds good, but we haven't lived it to the degree we should have lived it. What are you doing tomorrow morning? Well, I'm going to the office because I have a secular job. Okay. Or are we, I'm going to the office so that while I'm employed and doing what I am, I'm there as an instrument of God to bring life and peace. See the difference? My attitude changes my vocabulary. When you get up on a Monday morning, it's not, oh dear God, it's Monday. It's hallelujah, Monday's coming. I can go back and reach the community for Jesus. I do. Some people that I, I, I told you I was I was doing some work for a company and one morning the CEO called me in and he said, Derek, can we have a chat? Close the door. He said, You make my, my job difficult. And I was taking a look at that like I'm, I thought I was doing a good job for you. I thought I was helping you. I thought I was building you up. I said, I, I don't understand, sir. What am I doing wrong? He said, now you come in here on a Monday morning full of bubbles, full of life, and, and, and I'm miserable, and the staff are starting to ask me why I'm not like you. Mm. <laughs> and I said, Chris, but why aren't you like me? Because <laughs> he's a Christian, see? Mm. Oh, yes. But he comes to work like his breakfast was three lemons. Mm. <laughs> Church, are we ready? As, as, see, there's nobody here that's saved that's not in the ministry. If you're in the ministry, but you're saved, you're in the ministry. You may not be in the fivefold ministry that God calls the, the, the equipment for the church, but you're in the ministry. So what are you doing with that ministry? As Paul said, I'm ready to speak the things that I ought or the things that I should. Are we ready to speak what we should this morning? The Word of God is alive and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Come on, Hebrews chapter 4. The Word of God is powerful, alive, and powerful than any two-edged sword. Cutting between the soul and the spirit. What are we cutting between? Our words cut. They can either cut to pieces, or they can cut away the rubbish and bring life. But if we're not having the right confession, if we're not speaking the right things, we're not going to have the same effect of Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So I want to say to you this morning, we have a responsibility to speak this word. Yeah. Whether you speak three words or 300,000 like Pastor Raymond, <laughs> you have an ob obligation to speak the word. And let me tell you how God works. God will give you the opportunity. Yes. Every day, He'll give us the opportunity to speak life. Wow. Even if you don't know, if you're not eloquent in, 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 in Scripture, you don't know all the Scriptures like the pastors, and you think, well, I can't do that, you don't have to quote Scripture. No. Just live life. <laughs> if you say, glory be to God, where's that in Scripture? Well, it's there. But it's there in so many places, you don't have to pick one. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory be to God. <laughs> Somebody gives you something, you say, thank you, praise God. Not just thank you. See, change our vocabulary. The Bible says in all things. Sorry, how many things? Oh. All things. Do what? Give thanks. thanks. In all things. So when you buy bread at the at the at the convenience store and the, and the attendant helps you, you take and say, Thank you, praise be to God. Why? Because you got bread, see? Where did it come from? Not Sasco <laughs> directly. It turned in the natural. But where did it come from? God made all things. So when we start, we, we change our culture to the culture of Christ, we give thanks for all things. 
My wife and I have been to some challenging places. Mm. Can you say amen to that? Mm -hmm. I've lived in some challenging accommodations. <laughs> <laughs> I have. <laughs> but you know what? Mm. Especially being married to my awesome, beautiful wife. Mm. We can have a tough day. We can have a long day. Some days our days start at 2 in the morning. Yep. And then at midnight the next day we're still busy. Do you know how tired you can be? Yes. But you know what happens? Even when I'm at that last and you can see my eyes look tired and my body's not so quick. Mm. I know one thing. I don't know when it's going to be. Maybe in the next five minutes. Mm. Maybe it's in the mm. next ten minutes. Maybe mm. it's in the next hour. But I'm getting an opportunity that my wife and I can lay down together. She can put her head on my chest and we're together. Mm. What I'm going through right now lessons because mm. I'm looking for the points. Mm -hmm. When you give thanks, it makes it better. Mm -hmm. Just like my wife loving me, it makes it better. Mm -hmm. Church, I want to, I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a fruit inspector. <laughs> I want to inspect your fruit. Now that's not being unkind. Mm. That's not in, in, inconveniencing your life. It is infiltrating into your life. Mm -hmm. But I want to be a fruit inspector. Here's my brother. I'm just using an example. Mm -hmm. This is not you. okay? Mm -hmm. Sunday morning he lifts his hands and mm -hmm. sings hallelujah. But on Saturday night he was lifting his hands to his wife. Mm -hmm. I want to come and inspect that. Say, brother, that's wrong. Amen. Don't do that. Mm. That's not godly. Mm. When I hear words that come out of people's mouths, mm. that's not godly. I'm going to say to you, that's not right. Mm. Not because I want to judge you. Mm -hmm. See, the Bible, and, we, and we're going to get into that one of these days. We're going to teach on that because it's something that needs to be taught in the church. How many of you heard the Bible says, judge not, lest you be judged? Mm -hmm. The Bible says that. It does say that. But that was not in the context that you and I should not bring alignment and correction to Come the on. Word of God. Amen. Amen. So what does the world do and the other sinner do? Don't judge me, brother. Because that's like Dan. You know when you play hide and seek? Oh, Dan. You can't touch me, Dan. That, mm. The way they say, oh, don't, don't judge me. That's Dan. No, it's not. Mm. The Bible says, you that are spiritual, judge all things. Discerning mm. the life in God from the things of the flesh. So the judgment that we talk about, unfortunately, when they wrote the Bible into different languages from the original, they used the same word as judgment. It's not the same word. The Bible talks about discerning mm. what is righteous and unrighteous. Dividing the light from the dark. Dividing the quick the, uh, from the marrow. Mm. The flesh from the spirit. The wheat from the chaff. That's judging. Let me ask you. Which one is a blue microphone and which one is an orange microphone? Blue, orange, chicken or beef? Now, you just judge which one was which, didn't you? But the Bible says judge not. But you just judged. See, it's not, you didn't condemn. You see, the, the judgment that was talking about is condemnation, destruction, and breaking down. But when I judge... What you're doing, my brother, is sin. That's not judging you to condemn you. That's judging you to get you out of your mess on, so that yes. you can stand up for God. Come Thank on. you, Lord. We need to teach on that because, see, the, the enemy got everybody saying, well, it's free for all. You can do what you want because yeah. nobody can judge you. Oh, and you, I've heard this one too. While I'm, throwing, while I'm throwing down the elephants, let me shoot this one. Mm. Well, I'm, it's just me and God, see. Mm. If God wants to convict me, He will. Come on. <laughs> I saw it when I... Yeah, Let me tell you what happened in the Old Testament when they tried that. They died. The earth opened and swallowed them. I don't want to live in the Old Testament. Hey, you want the blessing of the Old Testament, then you've got to have the conditions. I don't want to live in the Old Testament. I don't want to live like that. God's not judging me. I pass from judgment to life. What's going to separate me from God is what I do, not what He's done. <laughs> so I want to close in verse 19 of the book of Psalms may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart 
Yes, Lord. Be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. When we go to bed at night, can we say, Lord, have the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart been acceptable to you today? My Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. And if they haven't, then tomorrow let's do it better. Psalm 19, 14. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my lips and my heart be acceptable in the sight, pleasing in the sight. Church, we need to redeem our language. We need to redeem our tongue. Yes. So that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, pleasing to my God. See, not all the words we speak are sin. But are they pleasing to God? Yes. I want to be pleasing to God. That I may know Him, please Him, and honor Him. Will you stand with me as we close?